here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making the Jam Jar Happiness Blanket. We are making a single bed size blanket and the multiples are two and three plus two and there is a link to the blog post in the description box which will tell you all about this in much more detail so do follow the link if you have questions about what it is exactly that you are making you will need your jam jar happiness yarn pack your hook that you usually use for DK some stitch markers and scissors the way the project is built is that each week is 30 rows these 30 rows are made up of five rows, which we repeat six times. And it is these five rows that I'm going to show you in the videos. You see, I am going to make a sampler with my five rows with a small amount of stitches. And I suggest you make this sampler too. It will be useful as a pattern reminder and it will give you the opportunity to practice your stitches. You can use yarn from your pack or just some stash yarn that you might have lying around. So technically I will only be showing you the first five rows of each week which you then repeat another five times so six times in total and you have to go and consult the color table for the colors as I will only be using the first five colors of each week. This time most of the rows will be interesting rows and there will not be many boring rows so there will be lots of stitches for you to try out and these five rows will fly by and this is where the formula for making this blanket in this way will help you get through the rows and will help you to get the blanket made and without further ado let's get started you will need your Jam Jar Happiness Yarn Pack, which are 15 balls of Wendy Supreme DK. You will need the hook that you usually use for DK. I use three and a half. You might be using the prescribed hook a number four. Then you will also need some stitch markers and scissors. We will not be using any needles because we are not sewing in any ends. Let's get started with week one. So week one is called Bluebell and as a child I was always picking these because they used to grow in the field behind my grandparents and I used to pick them and take them into the house and indeed they would end up in a jam jar. So great memories there. So let's get started. Row zero, we are going to have to do our starting chain. So we are using mocha and you are going to make your slip knot. Make it whichever way you usually make it. Insert your hook. And if you're starting your blanket, you will have to chain 194 chains. If you are here now with me making the sampler, you will have to chain 32 chains. So yarn over and pull through the yarn through the loop on your hook. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So make sure you have the right amount of chains. Use some stitch markers to count a certain amount of chains. Put your stitch marker in and then continue counting. So I will see you when you have either your 194 chains or your 32 chains if you are working with me to make the sampler. So I have here my 32 chains. You should have your 194 chains or your 32 if you're making the sampler as well. 
I have placed a stitch marker in my last chain and also one in the first one just so that I remember which ones are my first and my last stitches. So now let's get going on the five row repeat that we will be doing this week. So this is row one of Bluebell and we are going to be doing a chain one. So after you have finished chaining, you are going to do another chain one. Now this chain one we will be doing in every row. Every row will start with a chain one because it is our turning chain. We are going to be disregarding this chain. It does not count. It is just so that we can gain the height for the stitch that we will be doing in the very first stitch. So in fact, where that chain one is coming out of. So that is here, my last chain, which is my 32nd or your 194th. So we are going to do a double crochet in there. So yarn over, go into your chain there. And of course, my stitch marker is in the way. There we go, into there, picking up two strands, coming up again, and you do your double crochet. So pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Now, we've used this one, so it might be worth just taking out your stitch marker and putting it in the V of this very first double crochet that we have created. Because this will be your last stitch that you will be doing when you come back, of course, and just so that you don't forget to do it. It will become a habit, but just putting those stitch markers there as a reminder for now will be a great help. And now, of course, we are going to be placing a double crochet in each stitch along our chain. So you will be doing 194 double crochets, or in my case here, I will be doing 32 of them. A double crochet is yarn over, insert, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we continue like this all along the chain. I will see you at the end of the row. I'm just getting to the end of my double crochet row here. And yeah, it's easy here because I know this is my last stitch as I've got the stitch marker in there. So I have now done my 194 double crochets, or in my case, 32. And the last double crochet here I have not finished because when we change colour, we are going to pull through the new colour through the last pull through of the stitch at the end of the previous row. So we're going to just leave it right there. I'm going to put it down, get my scissors and cut off my yarn. And then I'm going to go to the next color, which is raspberry. And now I am going to pull through the raspberry as if I was just already crocheting with it. Look, and I'm finish my mocha stitch. There we go. Just pull it tight. And that's fine. Okay, so now we have changed colour ready for row two. And row two starts with chain one, as will every row. Then you turn. And then we are going to do a double crochet in the first stitch. So that means in that very first stitch where you can see this chain one coming out of. So yarn over into the first stitch you do a double crochet, pull through two and pull through two. Now once again, it would be handy to just move that stitch marker until you're used to where that first and last stitch is. And then now, of course, we are going to get started on our special stitch here. So we are going to skip one stitch, this one here, and then we are going to do three double crochets in the next stitch. 
So into the next stitch and you'll have to tip your work here to see the V. You are going to pick up both the strands of the V and do three double crochets in there. Then we are going to repeat the next sequence. Skip two, working in the third, picking up those two strands, you are going to be placing three double crochets into the next stitch. So basically we are making granny clusters and with those you skip two into the third for three double crochets. And you do that all along your row. So basically now we are dividing the row into three. So that means you will have 10 clusters if you're doing your sampler and you will have 64 clusters if you're doing the blanket. 64 clusters plus a double crochet at the beginning and one at the end, which I will show you in a moment. Skip two. Place three double crochets in the third stitch. I will see you at the end of the row. So I am just doing my last cluster and I can already see that I have at the end here two stitches left, which is correct because we skipped one stitch in the beginning as well. So that's what we need to skip. And then to end, we are going to do a double crochet in the last stitch and don't pull through the yarn on that last double crochet but you are going to cut off the yarn and you're going to use the next color which is teal so I'm going to pull through the teal there we go that finishes row two and we are now ready for row three before we go on I would just like to mention that please don't cut your ends too short. Cut them about 15 centimeters so it would be easy for you to work with them later on, you know, making them disappear into the border, but also so they don't come undone. Okay, so for row three, you're going to chain one, turn, and then you're going to do a double crochet in the first stitch. So that means the stitch where that chain one is coming out of. You do a double crochet. Then we are going to swap around the stitch marker into that V of the double crochet we just created. So now before we start our actual repeat, we are going to do a loop of four chains. So one, two, three, and four. Then it says skip three, one, two, three, and we are going to work in between the clusters and we place a single crochet there. Okay, then we start our repeat and the repeat is chain five, one, two, three, four, and five. You skip three stitches, so you skip a cluster and you work in between the clusters with a single crochet. Then you repeat this to the end. So one, two, three, four, five, five, yes, and a single crochet in between the clusters. One, two, three, four, five, single crochet in between the clusters. So you do this until the end of the row. I'm just doing my last chain five here. Now, the last loop, as we did in the beginning, we are only going to do four chains. So one, two, three, four. Then we skip here and we do a double crochet in the last stitch. So you yarn over and yeah, indeed, my stitch marker is in the way again. I shall remove it first but I am keeping my eye on that last stitch. And there we go. Don't pull through on the last pull through of that double crochet, because now, of course, we are ready to start row four. And row four is done in Koala. So let's cut off the yarn. 
and get our koala color. So I'm going to pull through my koala. There we go. So that finishes row three. Now on to row four, chain one, turn. And we are going to do a double crochet in the first stitch. So that means on top of this double crochet there. So find the V. Oops, that your chain is coming out of. And if you're not confident yet of where to find your first and last stitch, keep replacing those stitch markers. And now we are going to be placing three double crochets around each loop that we have created in this row here. So yarn over and working around the loop, you are going to be placing three double crochets around it. Then you go to the next loop and you create three double crochets. And I just loved the effect this created. It was a lovely, uh, holy structure, I thought. Look, look at the holes. I loved the effect. So I will see you at the end of the row. Now, you might have the feeling that your blanket goes out a bit, but of course that's because with these loops we have created too many stitches. But of course, now that we are putting those double crochets on top again, it brings it all together again and we have openings. So don't worry too much about that, as long as the next row that you put onto those loops has the stitches that we need, so 194 or 32, you will be fine. So I'm just doing my last cluster here. And then of course here I've got my stitch ready marked to do my last double crochet, not pulling it through because we are changing colour. Cutting off the yarn, leaving about 10, 15 centimetres. So I'm pulling through the mustard, finishing my row four, and now we're ready to start row five. So row five is chain one, turn, and you do your double crochet in that very first stitch. There we go, and replacing the stitch marker. So now we are going to make boxes. So you chain one, you skip one, then you do a double crochet in the next one. So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and we have made a little box. So this is what you're going to be repeating. Chain one, skip one, work into the next one, a double crochet. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. And this is how you will work all along your row. So I'm getting to the end of my row and I'm just doing my chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. So here I am now going to place a double crochet into that last stitch. So you will end your row on two double crochets. So these are the five rows that you are going to be repeating this week. So first of all, it's a double crochet row. Then it's a cluster row. Then it's a loop row. Then clusters around the loops and then boxes. OK, but these are the five rows that you will be repeating six times, giving you a total of 30 rows. Do go and check the blog post for the colours of the next rows, of course. 
So the next color is eucalyptus. So I'm going to do row six with you so you can see how you connect both the um, the sequences of the row. So row one, two, three, four, five. And then now you have to do row one. And I'm just going to show you how to put it on the boxes row. So the next color is eucalyptus. So pull it through. Chain one. Turn. Do your double crochet, then replace your stitch marker if you want to. And now, of course, you're going to have to place one double crochet in each stitch. But we have boxes to work with, so I'm going to place one double crochet here on top of these two stitches. And then from here on, I'm going to place two double crochets in each box. So this is really easy to put the double crochets into the boxes. And this is how you will continue your whole row. So I'm just getting to the end of my row. And so I've placed two double crochets everywhere. And now here I am going to place one double crochet in that marked stitch. And of course, that is the end of row six. So from here on, of course, you will be able to continue with the instructions that I gave you in the beginning of this video. Now, just so that you are aware, each row, of course, needs to have 32 or 194 stitches. But sometimes I count in clusters or in loops. So with the cluster rows, you will have 64 clusters. And with the boxes row, you will have 96 boxes. So this is done. So it's a little bit easier for you to count. But of course, make sure you keep counting so that you are not losing stitches. And I would certainly recommend counting a lot in week one until you are used to what you are doing. The stitch markers will help so you don't lose any stitches. Please also check each week's key that I provide with the written pattern because it will explain to you how to do the special stitches. We might not use every colour every week, so there's no need to worry about that. Don't forget, you will have to go and find out your colours from the colour table in the link in the description box below. This will take you to the blog post with the written pattern and the colours. If you manage to keep up with the weekly videos and the 30 rows of homework, you will have a blanket in about six weeks. Now, don't worry if you cannot keep up or life gets in the way. The videos will remain online forever. The pattern will be there. The links will keep working and the yarn pack will be a permanent fixture in our shop. You can do this project at your own pace. Make sure you bookmark the playlist. And even if you want to make this blanket later on, you can still come back and find all the information whenever you want to start making or repeating this project. Should you have any questions at all about the project or if you want to show off your progress, please go to my Facebook group, Ophelia talks crochet and show us there or ask us your question there. I do hope you will enjoy the process and enjoy crocheting. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in next week's video. Bye!